The Senate GOP has unveiled their infrastructure counteroffer to the Biden administration. As some of you may know, Biden is negotiating with GOP senators, about 10 of them, in order to come to some sort of agreement on what will be included in the infrastructure bill and how the infrastructure bill will be paid for. Now, remember, the first proposal coming from Joe Biden was to the tune of $2.3 trillion. He's already conceded to cutting funding for the bill to $1.7 trillion. Republicans have now counteroffered with uh, uh, spending that goes a little under one trillion, and of course refuses to raise any taxes on the wealthy or corporations. Biden's latest offer to Republicans came in at 1.7 trillion. That's 600 billion dollars less than his original plan. He has urged the GOP to put at least one trillion dollars into this infrastructure package, and they came back with something a little bit lower than that. Uh, so Senate Republicans unveiled a 928 billion dollar infrastructure counter offer to President Joe Biden. In their counter offer, Republicans again rejected Biden's call to raise corporate taxes, contending they could cover infrastructure costs with regressive taxation. So they want to use funds already allocated by Congress for the coronavirus relief plan and also with transportation user fees, which would apply to everyone, including the nation's poor. So that's why I refer to it as a regressive tax instead of just raising taxes on corporations. One other thing I want to just quickly mention is that remember Biden's first proposal was to increase the corporate tax rate from 21%, which is what Trump had lowered it to from 35%. Biden wanted to increase it to 28%. Now he is saying, look, it's got to at least be 25%, guys. And Republicans are saying, no, we are not interested in that. That is a non starter for us. Yeah, before I get to how this has devastated the, the Green New Deal aspects of the infrastructure bill, which we told you it would. Uh, let me just clarify a whole bunch of important context here. So first of all, Anna pointed out that uh, they're gonna put some gas tax on you, etc. We're gonna get to that in a second, but also use some of the funds already allocated. So that leaves the question of, wait, how much of this is new funding? Because 928, it sounds like it's close to a trillion dollars. Now, Biden started at 2.3, um, but it turns out, no, it's not 928. Uh, the new funding would only be $257 billion. So Biden started at 2.3 trillion. The Republicans have, in essence, countered with a quarter of a trillion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a giant, giant difference. Of course, I found that fact at the bottom of like the 18th article I read. Most of it is being presented as nine. Almost everyone is presenting it as 928 billion. Now let's talk about Joe Biden's weaknesses. Um, so he says 2.3. Then he immediately goes and negotiates it against himself, and before getting any offer, goes fine 1.7. It's ridiculous. Like nobody that wants to actually negotiate and and do hardball would ever do that, right? You don't go to a car dealership and be like, "I'll give you twenty thousand, fine, I'll give you twenty five thousand before the guy even says anything, <laughs> right? Um, and then uh, and then look at what he said there. Uh, he wants the GOP to come up with at least a trillion dollars. I know. That means you're already <laughs> settling for a trillion. It's so obvious. And a fake trillion at that. Yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that because that statement from Biden is telling. It means that he is obviously willing to accept a $1 trillion infrastructure bill, which means like the very nature of that low funding. Well, first of all, please don't ever compare that to anything FDR did in regard to um, his economic policies. And secondly, why are we needlessly like cutting the funding that significantly, more than 50%. And so Republicans are like, if he's willing to settle for a trillion, let's come in even lower. So they came in at 928 billion. Um, and what is also relevant to this is yes, Jake, reappropriating money that had been appropriated for the coronavirus relief bill um, is the same kind of trick that they played. Republicans played while they were negotiating for the coronavirus relief bill. They wanted to basically take money that had already been appropriated for other things and reappropriate it for the coronavirus relief bill. And the reason why they want to do that is to avoid having to raise any taxes on the rich. Remember, those are the real people that they are representing here. And 
Elizabeth Warren in an interview with NBC decided to point that out, but also talked about what Republicans are leaving out in their counter offer. And that's super relevant to this, let's watch. Look, I don't really think this is a serious counter offer. First of all, they don't have pay force for this, it's not real. They have this illusory notion of how we're gonna take money that's already been committed to other places and other spending. Second part is I'm not hearing about the green infrastructure, about the importance of when we make these investments that we're talking about moving our buses to electric, our school buses to electric, our mass transit to electric, so that we're bringing down our carbon footprint and whether or not they put enough money in to do this. But the third one is notice who gets left behind, the women. Infrastructure is about helping people get to work and helping businesses thrive because they've got workers. We build roads and bridges to do that. We invest in broadband to do that. We need to invest in childcare to do that. Millions of women are out of the workforce right now. And one out of four says, the reason I can't get childcare. So just two more things I wanna mention before I go to you, Jenk, because again, I have a few other telling aspects to this story to share with you all, including what we've heard from Shelley Moore Capito. That's the Republican Senator who is essentially leading the charge among Republican senators in these negotiations. And she says this in regard to human infrastructure, okay? Remember, we're talking about providing funding for elder care. We're talking about providing funding for child care. So people who want to work, for instance, are able to go to work and their wages don't end up getting completely wiped out by the cost of child care. Well, Shelley Moore of Capito is not in any way concerned about that. She says that the White House is still bringing their human infrastructure into this package. And that's just a non-starter for us. The she humans continued. are a non-starter for no, us. No, they say it openly, guys, <laughs> openly and transparently. It's a non-starter for us, she continued, referring to Biden's plans to put money into programs including care for elderly and disabled Americans as well. And then let's go to the final graphic here because the statement from Jen Psaki is also relevant to this. In a statement later Thursday, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki praised constructive additions to the Republican proposal, but said the administration remains concerned about the funding levels for rail systems, public transit and clean energy. She added that the White House is quote, worried that major cuts in COVID relief funds could imperil pending aid to small businesses, restaurants, and rural hospitals. And of course, she's referring to them repurposing that money. But don't give them a high five for their counter offer. Their counter offer was garbage. In fact, the way that Biden is negotiating on this is also pretty awful because Republican senators got him to cut funding for broadband. And who do you think broadband is overwhelmingly going to benefit? These Republican lawmakers constituents in rural parts of the country. Yep. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, so first let's talk about what's already been cut so to Anna's point right there. Broadband improvements gone. This is funny, improvements to roads and bridges have been cut. That sounds like that's the core of infrastructure. So that's already out of Biden's proposal, let alone the Republican ones. That's where he went down from 2.3 to 1.7. He cut out funding for research and development and supply chain enhancements. Those are all already gone. Now, when I say roads and bridges, it's some of the roads and bridges. I presume they're gonna do some roads and bridges. Otherwise, what are we doing here? It's called infrastructure. And now the GOP proposal says, uh, that they should also cut the $400 billion for home health care. That's what Elizabeth Warren was referring to. And then, uh, she, or partly what she was referring to, and then Shelley Moore Capito says that's the human infrastructure she doesn't want anything to do with, right? So I'll tell you right now ahead of time, as I told you about the green energy bill, uh, parts of the bill that Senator Warren referred to there, I told you they were gonna cut that. It was gonna be the first thing on the chopping block, and Biden was gonna agree to it. So all the progressives who were giving him credit for actually you know, doing a part of the Green New Deal, I was like, whoa, 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 he ain't gonna do it, okay? And so unfortunately, I was right about that. And now I'm telling you ahead of time, they will definitely chop that elderly care mm -hmm. right? and nursing homes. Gone, gone, that's not gonna happen, okay? And then $100 billion for electric vehicle consumer rebates or spending to upgrade housing and schools. <laughs> so wait, spending on housing and schools, that's, this is the Republican version now, right? Mm -hmm. Are gone, roads and bridges are gone, the human infrastructure is gone, green energy is gone, 
uh, electric vehicle consumer uh, rebates are gone, what's left? Tax yeah. cuts for the rich, tax cuts for the rich remain. Yeah, right. so now <laughs> let's go to that uh, because they say, well, look, uh, we don't have to pay for much of it because it's all accounting gimmicks. Most of it isn't real, it's only about $267 billion, right? Um, which is a fraction of what Biden wants, which by the way, let me just do an important side note here. It, this has got Dodd Frank written all over it. So um, that was Obama doing incredibly weak financial reform. Uh, and then getting uh, the media to celebrate it as if it was historic. And, and the media played along perfectly and everybody in Washington was ecstatic. It was, it barely touched the big banks. And then they called it historic as if it was fixed. And then to this day, every reporter, a historic Dodd-Frank reform. The people who were championing it, including a guy who was a legendary conservative, former head of the Federal Reserve, Paul Walk, uh, Volcker, uh, came out and said, no, I don't want my name on any of this. This is garbage, it doesn't actually uh, rein in the big banks at all, okay? It, uh, paraphrasing obviously what he's saying there. So this has got th that written all over it. Let's repackage stuff that we already passed. Let's actually put in a tiny amount of money and let's call it historic. And probably the media will go along with it. A good question is whether progressives will go along with it. So far, not good signs on that front. Uh, there's Elizabeth Warren trying to fight back, so that's good. But most progressives usually so far have told Biden, green light, do whatever you want and we'll never complain. So we'll see how that plays out. But now guys, I wanna talk about the taxes that Anna brought up. So the Republicans say under no circumstances are we going to raise the corporate taxes. We lowered them from 35 to 21 under Trump. And we're not gonna go up a dollar above 21%. And Biden's begging them, can you just please go to 25%, which is 10% lower than 35, I'm doing the math for you. And as a percentage of the 35, it's you know obviously a giant number, 40% of it. They will, will remain intact if Biden gets his way. So the corporations are gonna come out giant, giant winners if Biden gets his way, but the Republicans say that's not enough. So user fees, but they're not against taxes. This is really, really, really important. For Republicans, they're not against raising your taxes. They just want taxes to be raised on you and not corporations. They're not in favor of human infrastructure, okay? So in this context, they're saying not only user fees, that goes to all of you, it's very regressive. So that means you pay more as a percentage of your income and disposable cash, etc., than a rich person does. So the poor and the middle class get hit much, much harder. And then the last part of it is a gas tax. Gas taxes. It, for folks who are on a limited budget, it, it deals you a super heavy blow. Meanwhile, the corporations are perfectly protected. And then the last part of the trick guys will be, they'll, they'll turn around and say, after they increase your gas taxes, the Republicans will turn around and go, can you believe how much uh, there are in taxes? The Democrats, they raise the taxes on you to do this uh, terrible infrastructure bill and now your gas tax is higher. So you should vote for Republicans, even though they're the ones proposing the gas tax. Guaranteed, that's what they do every single time. So um, the final analysis on the Republican proposal is it's trash and treating it as if it's a real proposal, which is what Biden's doing. They, they nearly had pom poms going, oh, Republicans yeah, gave us a proposal, we're so happy, it's so wonderful and constructive. Instead of pushing back in the ways that we're explaining to you, which is purely fact based, right? I'm giving you my analysis, which is that it's trash, but the facts are indisputable. They, the Republicans are pushing for a gas tax that would hurt you so badly because they are desperate to protect corporations. Yep. Now you could easily say that. Saki could have said that, Biden could say that, but they don't. Instead, they say, "Oh, the Republicans were wonderful and how constructive they were." So, uh, hey, which always leads to the question of which side are you really on? Mm -hmm. and, and guys, look, if you're wondering, you know, I keep telling you on the show, Joe Biden doesn't actually want to do his so-called agenda, and you, you might be wondering why. I mean, well, why does he present an agenda and then he, and you could see in the facts that he's not really fighting for it, right? Because the the agenda is to get votes. He puts out an agenda that sounds really good and progressive. He knows the country is really progressive. Everyone in media prints it as if he already did it. And then everybody gives him credit and calls him FDR. And then he turns around and what he actually is planning to pass with the Republicans, if anything passes at all, is what corporations are 100% good with, right? Yeah. And he turns around to the people that really matter, his donors. And he says, I told you, nothing would fundamentally change. 
So he gets the best of both worlds. The press does his PR for him and the voters get tricked into voting for him as opposed to another Democrat. And, and the corporations get their taxes protected. Uh, by the way, they will get a lot of the funding from this. And they make yes. the American people pay for the funding that they are going to get. So in the end, it doesn't, it, this bill is not for us. It again, for the billionth time in a row is for corporations. So I wanna actually respond to Hottie Meter um, in our member section, I believe, because uh, it's a good point and I wanna, I wanna respond to it. So it's, you know, don't just throw out numbers in regard to what the final bill will cost, but we need to focus on what individual states need, which is a great point. But the reason why we bring the numbers up in regard to the GOP's counteroffer is because when the GOP decides that they wanna cut, I mean, at this point, it's $1.7 trillion from Biden's original proposal. And you know what Republicans tend to prioritize. You can definitely bet your bottom dollar that they are going to specifically go after parts of the infrastructure bill that would overwhelmingly benefit working Americans. And that includes people who might wanna go to work, but they can't afford childcare. People who are tasked with elder care, for instance, and they're certainly not compensated fairly for that work that they do. These are the things that are always on the chopping block for Republicans, which is why we bring up you know, where the numbers are are at when it comes to these negotiations. And you're absolutely right, Jenk. They do see opportunities to bring in some money for their home state. So maybe they'll be a little more reluctant to cut funding on certain parts of the infrastructure bill. But I do find it fascinating that they were not only willing to cut money for broadband internet, which again, overwhelmingly benefits people living in rural America, but that Biden was willing to just like go along with it instead of using the fact that they wanted to cut that as leverage against them with their own constituents. Because I'm sure these constituents would want broadband internet. I'm gonna give the last word to one of our members. We love doing the show together with you guys. The infamous Mr. Joy Boy writes in, Republicans hate human infrastructure, but love human taxes. They love corporate infrastructure, but hate corporate taxes. The equation means your taxes go to support the corporations. Yep, that about accurately summarizes it. Uh, and once again, our members uh, at the Young Turks um, understand politics infinitely better than most mainstream media reporters. Thanks for watching the Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.